out of the message is that the wise men still seek him. Now, if you look at our manger scene, we've got the angel, we've got the, the we've got a camel down there, we've got a donkey down there, of course, baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph. There are some shepherds there, and there are three wise men. Now, I don't know why they always do this, but they always put the wise men with the manger scene. Well, they showed up about two years later, and they wound up at the house. That's just kind of a, a, a strange thing to me, but it always makes it into the Christmas story, does it not? And so that's a good thing. But we're in Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to begin in verse 1. It says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the in the east, and we have come to worship him. And Herod, the king, heard it. He was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And gathering all together the chief priests and the scribes, the people began to inquire them where the Christ was to be born. Now, they weren't at the manger scene, but these magi, they were very important people. Uh, now, how many of you can tell me how many um, of these wise men showed up. How many were there? We don't know. A lot of people say three because there were three gifts, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. You know, they're pictured to have these long robes, and they, they, they're pictured also riding on camels. Well, I also read somewhere in my preparation for this message that maybe it wasn't camels at all because these men were so important that they probably had a... a uh, a Persian steed that they rode in on, and because they were the uh, important people they were, they probably had uh, a small army with them, because they traveled about 900 miles to get from where they were to where Jesus was. They were determined, once God showed them the star and made known to them what the star meant, they were determined to seek Jesus. Now, they were that determined to seek Jesus. We've met Jesus, have we not? How determined are we to make our way to worship? How intently are we going before the Father in prayer? How eager are we to, to experience God's presence and the Spirit and to let His power flow through us? These men traveled 900 miles with a great intent and desire because God had made, made known to them that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords was going to be born. Uh, that means that they left their gods, they left the comfort of their zone or their places of living, and they made their way to Jerusalem. They traveled afar, it says. Since they came from afar off, it was about 900 miles. Now, someone told me, uh, well, they didn't tell me, I read that someone already figured out their names. Well, at that, you know, it didn't list them in here, and so if they went through history and found them, that's okay. I could probably go back in history and, you know, do some study and find lots of names of Magi and just attach it to it. That's not the issue. The issue is not where they rode horses or rode camels. The issue is what they were doing. They said, we've come to worship Him. Amen. Makes no difference anything else is said about them. They came with a heart. To worship the Lord. Now something else about these magi. In Persia, back in their day, there wasn't a king that was put in place in Persia unless till the magi said, yeah, they've attained the study of the natural sciences, they understand some astrology, they, they understand the things that the magi understood, and until the magi said, yeah, this guy knows what he's doing, they didn't get, they didn't get noted they, they couldn't become king unless they were king makers is who they were. Isn't it strange that God sent king makers to Jerusalem? Why? Because there was a child there. And guess what? He was the king of all kings. He was the king of kings and lord of lords. Somehow, from where they came to and on their way, 
God walked with them, and they knew when they got there what they needed to do was to kneel and worship. Amen. Is it your heart? Because I can tell you, these were wise men. They heard God. They followed the star that God gave them. They came to the place where God wanted them to be. They listened to God. Are you listening to God today? Will you be listening to Him tomorrow? He gives, if He gives us a day after that, will you be listening to Him then? You see, their whole life became about listening to God. My question is this. What is your whole life about? Is it listening to God? Because what we do, for God's the only thing that's going to count, by the way. If you try to do something yourself, guess what? You'll probably forget that. How many of you remember what you got for not this past yesterday? How many of you remember what you got from the Christmas before that you wanted? Well, well, you got a shirt. I, he always gets a shirt. He, he'll remember. <laughs> Listen. How do you remember when you were 10 what you got? You do. Amen. God's given you a great memory. Most of us start. don't remember it all. 20 days up. A what? 20 days up. All right. Okay. <laughs> Most of us don't remember it all. You know why? Because we were wanting something for ourselves. I you remember? I'm glad you did. I had dolls. All right. Gave me light. Got what? Light. See, I'm sitting down here low. I remember that. I'm still here. I remember. Amen. All right. Now listen. They came to worship. I remember worship. I remember what it does to my heart. I know what it does to my spirit. And I know how it brings me close to God. I don't ever like missing worship at all. I want to be here. This is what we're doing. When Lloyd led us in music and the praise team come up, what were you doing? Were you listening or were you worshiping? You see, they went to worship the Lord. If it's of your mindset to sit there and talk back and forth while the praise team singing or while we're singing the hymns and things that we do, you're not here to worship. You're just here to socialize. You're going to miss everything that God had intended for you and how he wanted to bless you. Listen, when you come here, you have one focus. That's to worship God, to hear from God, and do what God says. Amen? Amen. That's what a wise man, person does. They listen to God, and they get it done. And they were troubled, it said. And King, was, uh, King Herod was put there by Caesar Augustus. And the wise men came looking for the king of kings and lord of lords, and they were asking all, all around in it, and it came back to Herod's ears. And so he got him to, to come see him. He was a little troubled, the scripture said. This king may absurd him. And that was a big, big trouble for King Herod. Two of his sons, I think, or son-in-laws, were going to try to, to take over his, uh, uh, his kingship. And so he had him killed. He was paranoid. He didn't want to lose his authority. So when he heard about a king of kings and lord of lords, he thinks, my, my, my life is fixing to be turned upside down because I'm going to lose all my authority. So he called them too. And then they called the scribes and the Pharisees and said, where is this king of kings and lord of lords going to be born? And they told them. Wow. They, they found out. And so saw, uh, King Herod said this to them. Listen, when you find him, you come back and tell me. I want to worship him too. He was lying through his teeth. <laughs> That's what he was doing. He said, I want to worship them too. Yeah. And so they made their way. They saw the star. And when they saw the star again, after they walked out of Herod's house, his palace, it says that they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Listen. I know Jesus. We celebrate his birth. I know it's life. He let a sinless life. I know he died on a cross. They put him in a tomb. And I know that he rose again. And, I, and, and he lives. Amen. And this is what I know. Because of that, that's more important to me than a star. Because Amen. Jesus is light of the world. 
He'll outshine that star any day. But that's what the wise men needed to have exceedingly abundant, great joy. Because they saw the star. I've got Jesus in my life. I've got the Holy Spirit dwelling within me. What should I have regardless of what happens in my life? I should have great, deep, exceeding joy in my life. And nothing should take that away from me. Nothing should take that away from me. Because if you get your clue from what's out there, you're going to lose your joy. But if you get your clue from who's in here, guess what you got? You've got the joy that God intended for you to have if you're worshiping him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. If you make your life about him, you're going to get so close to him, it's just going to thrill your soul. From You're just going to start smiling like a Cheshire cat That's what you're going to do. You're just going to get so excited. You're going to get so happy because you know that coming to him to worship, having him touch your life, and have him lift your spirit, that just changes your life. These wise men, they came, they bowed down, and they worshiped. How did they know to do that? How did God reach them where they were and say, oh, here's a star, and by the way, I, I want to tell you how they knew that. God is at work all the time. Where did the Magi learn about Jesus? He was going to be born. How did they know to follow the star? You know, back in Daniel's day, King Nebuchadnezzar, I think it was, he had this dream, and he called all of his wise men in. Some of them were even called Magi. He called them all in and said, I need you to tell me my dream and interpret my dream. They couldn't do it. But Daniel had the gift of interpreting dreams. And so he went to the king and said, don't, don't kill the wise man. Don't let them give me, just give me a day. And let me go before the, my, my God. And I'll come back and tell you your dream. And he did. You know what Daniel became? He became the hero of those wise men and those magi. And you know what? They began to listen to his stories about the coming king. And so when they saw the star, God could impress upon you. See how God has worked through history? Listen, I want him to work through the history of Mill Creek Baptist Church. I want us to be able to clearly hear what he has to say. And I want us with the intent of those wise men, I want us to walk in God's wisdom and see this community where we live change for the glory of God, where people surrender their lives to the love of God because he paid the price for their sins and they encounter him and become their children. And then we get to experience them here and help them grow in the things of God. Amen? Wouldn't that be exciting? You know, if you really begin to worship God with all of your heart, if you really begin to do that, and he begins to just let his glow settle upon your life, folks are going to look at you and say, what's going on? What's different about you? And you get to tell them, it's Jesus in me. And when they see your rich life, because you're living so close to God, because you've learned what it means with a great intent, when you come to a place, let it be your heart to focus on Him, not anybody else. You will get that glow. You'll get that uh, effervescent face. You'll, you'll just begin to shine like the light of the world that you're supposed to be. And people will come to the light and ask the question, what makes you different? Amen. And the answer is Jesus. I met a lady today going to pick Philip, Philip up. Uh, I was thinking the band might be blocking where she wanted to go. She said, no, I'm walking. I said, well, I'd love for you to come to uh, Mill Creek Baptist Church. She says, I don't believe in Christianity. Whoa. And she said, do you know how much blood is on your hands? I was thinking, no? <laughs> but I know what she meant. There's been some horrible things done in the name of Christ. Those are people who aren't listening to Christ, by the way. She's looking at the negative and has never seen the positive. But I think from understanding Philip, she's a Satan worshiper as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. T. So there's a lady over there. I don't know her name. Do you know her name? Caitlin. Who? Her name is Caitlin. Caitlin? Caitlin. Caitlin. We need to pray for Caitlin that God delivers her. Amen. Amen. And we need to be the light in this church that lets her see there is a real Jesus who can make a real change in your life and who really loves you and one day is going to come. And if she doesn't change, she'll spend eternity with Satan in hell. We don't want that to happen to her life. You know what? When we start to worship like we do and get closer to God like we should because we seek the wisdom of God and want to become wise like the Magi, when you do that, all you know to do is kneel and worship Him. So I pray that becomes your heart. But as they worship Him, something else happened. It says, when they saw the star in verse 10, there was a, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And they came into the house, saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. And opening their treasures, they presented him gifts. Now this is really unique. These wise men gave extraordinary gifts to King Jesus. They gave him gold. That represented his kingly status. They gave him frankincense. That was a, a, a scent used in priestly responsibilities. You know who he is, don't you? He's our great high priest. He goes by, on, before the Father on our behalf. When Stephen was being stoned, what happened? Stephen looked up and said, there's Jesus at the right hand of God. He was standing there for him next to the Father, interceding for the child of God named Stephen. You see, he had a priestly role. He was a great high priest. And then also, he got gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, myrrh is one of the spices that is used for embalming. So, in those gifts, they rep represented the kingly status of Jesus, the priestly role of Jesus, <coughs> and the death of Jesus, right there in those gifts. But when they met him, they gave their gifts. You know what happened? They heard the voice of God. Don't go back and tell him. So they went home another way. But you know, when they met Jesus, what happened to their life, they were changed. I want to ask you, you say that you met Jesus. How much has your life changed? Now we looked last night at the people who the shepherds talked about when they told them what the angel had said and what they had heard and just said they wondered. Said they wondered. They didn't accept. When Mary at the manger heard what the shepherd said. She treasured. She treasured these things in her heart. Do you wonder about God? Have you really met God and got to know him and just wonder about his goodness? You, you get excited about his, his, his blessings and all that happens. But, you know, you're right, your life really hasn't changed from the day you said yes to Jesus. And today, real change comes when you meet Jesus. Your life is going to change. These wise men, they met Jesus. Their life has changed for the rest of their life. I don't want you to have a church relationship with God. I want you to have a personal relationship with God. See, there will probably be people in this church we're going to die and go to hell. Because they, all they have is a church life. If you don't have a personal relationship with God, if you don't have that personal relationship with God, you're going to bust hell wide open. You see, when you meet Jesus, your life has changed. How have you noticed the change in your life? Are you the same today as the day?
day you got saved, and the day before you got saved, I guess I would say. Has there been a transformation in your life? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yeah. Are you that new person in God through Christ? Are you just enjoying coming to church, going home and being the same? See, even when the shepherds, the lowest caste of society in that day, when they left the manger, they went about rejoicing. They didn't have a lot to rejoice about. When you kept sheep, you smelled like sheep. So when you had to go somewhere, everybody knew your occupation. Listen, even they, they left, went around rejoicing because they saw the King Jesus in the manger. The light was changed. The wise men saw King Jesus in the house. They worshiped and their life was changed. All the false gods from Mesopotamia and Babylon, they were gone from their lives. What are you holding on to? Let it go. Let Jesus have all of your life. Meet him today. Let your life be changed. That's my prayer for you. That you meet Jesus and your life becomes totally, wonderfully, amazingly changed. And when you know you met him, remember, they bowed down in worship and they brought gifts. I don't ever, hardly ever, preach a message about tithes and offerings. That's between you and God. But what changed in their life when they worshiped, they brought gifts. I can tell you this, you can never outgive God. Amen? Amen. You can never do that. So those wise men, they worshiped and they gave. When you worship, this is what you need to do. Those who are lost, you need to give your life to Jesus. Those who are saved, you need to give your life more fully. That's what he wants. And then give up what you have, not to prosper the church, but so we can participate with greater extent in feeding the poor and ministering to others. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, as we seek you, as the wise men did, would you bless us with a heart to worship as we worship, may it be recognized as we look at one another. May our lives are changed because our heart is to worship. Lord, whatever is crowding out the heart that we can't find the necessity make our lives fully about you. Remove that. We may be blind to what's holding us back. The Spirit of God is not. Let the Spirit of God just remove anything within us that would hinder us from wanting to worship you with all our heart. Remove that, God. And Lord, any chain that's holding back a person who's not yet suggested to Jesus let them understand the Spirit's call today and say, Jesus is who you need. He'll make the difference in your life. God, whatever you need to do, from the Bible study lessons we've had, from the music we've had, from the proclamation that's been given, do what you can do to bring lives more close to you and other people who are lost into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of invitation.